I'll see if I can find one for the first case where they think it's because they protect against the type 1 error rate. Uh, so I end up doing all the post-talk uh, Fisher LSDs, and I report that. I've actually got another table here for the Levine's test. You might want to look at one way. I've got, got it all uh, crammed into one table, which I think is probably not too crammed. Uh, the Levine's test here for each of the uh, dependent variables, the ANOVAs, and then the means and standard deviations. And then I've got, instead of reporting every single one of the post hoc tests, Fisher's LSD, which is really just a bunch of t-tests, I actually only report Cohen's D. And I reported for all the combinations, masters versus undergrad, PhD versus undergrad, and PhD versus masters. And then I've got the average of the Cohen's Ds for each of those dependent variables. And we can see that the pattern is associated with the verbal scales more so than with the memory and spatial scales. Um, Something I'll note is that uh, I, I've, uplo I've uploaded a video on Cohen's D, if you're not sure exactly what Cohen's D is. And technically, I should have reported Hedges G in this case. Uh, Cohen's D is, is uh, biased upwardly uh, because it needs, there, you need a correction to counteract the fact that in small sample sizes, Cohen's D is particularly biased upwards. I encourage you to check out the video on Cohen's D if you want to understand the differences, understand what Cohen's D is and uh, the differences with Hedges G. So that's the first way of writing up the um, MANOVA results based on the first four uh, parts of the, of the MANOVA tutorial that I uploaded in SPSS. Now the second way, if you decide to go the descriptive discriminant analysis approach, that is do the MANOVA and then follow it up with an examination of the discriminant function coefficients, which is the way I argue you should, which, because it's more informative, and other people as well, uh, you would uh, report basically the same thing. You start off with the correlations, and then that the boxes M uh, assumption was basically met. And then you report the MANOVA again, and then the Palais trace. But then you go into your eigenvalues. In the SPSS output for the MANOVA, there's eigenvalue, there are two eigenvalues associated with two of the uh, canonical variates that are extracted from the analysis. And I report what the eigenvalue was and the percentage of, var the percentage of accounted variance that that uh, eigenvalue is accounting for and uh, the Wilkes lambda associated with that. And then I go into uh, the discriminant function coefficients to help interpret the statistically significant MANOVA effect. The standardized discriminant function coefficients were consultant. I put those into a table called Table 2. The first table is identical to the first table in the, in the Type 1 approach to doing the MANOVA. And then I've got the discriminant function coefficients that help us interpret what the nature of this quote-unquote super variable is that's created by the MANOVA, or what I some call, sometimes call a a canonically derived uh, mean or data. Uh, and so I've got the raw uh, discriminant function coefficients in one column, the standardized discriminant function coefficients in another, and then the structure coefficients in the other. And I discuss these and interpret these in the uh, MANOVA SPSS videos I've uploaded. I'm just going through how I've reported these results. After going through the discriminant function coefficients and understanding what the nature of this, um, that helps us understand the nature of this super variable or canonical variate, I then look, I then estimate the uh, canonical, uh, the estimate the group centroids, which is just another way of calling them uh, canonically derived group means. Uh, again, I, I estimate these in SPSS. Uh, I encourage you to check that out. Uh, so then I end up uh, calculating means and standard deviations for these, this super dependent variable. Uh, and in accordance with Enders, I've got a citation here. I just performed an ANOVA on these. But I've also added an extra Neufeld Gardner citation that Enders doesn't actually recite, saying that um, aggregated data that are based on um, canonically derived um, functions don't have the same sampling distribution as a univariate, like a true univariate variable. And so I, was cons I, I used a conservative alpha level of 0 0.001 to test my, uh, to, to apply the ANOVA, the follow-up ANOVA uh, in this case. And then I end up finishing with some Bonferroni adjusted post hoc tests. 
uh, because I don't believe that the MANOVA protects you for anything. And so this was um, looking at the differences between the means on the super variable between PhD and masters. And I've got the Cohen's D values, which again, I should have reported Hedges G if you check out the, the video, but it's not that simple because so many people are expecting Cohen's D and a lot of people don't even know what Hedges G is. Uh, and then I, so I've reported the uh, Cohen's D values and then I interpret that based on Cohen's guidelines. So these are uh, two, here are two example template-ish, if you will, uh, guidelines, suggestions on how you can report a MANOVA. It's not easy. It's not as easy as just reporting a ma an ANOVA. It's fairly involved, and this should get you going. And I'll, I'll put a couple of citations to a couple of other papers that have done MANOVAs that I think I've done them well, and they report them reasonably well. Uh, I think they're missing some things that I've got in these in these results sections. So you might make use of both. Uh, oh, I hope you found this useful, and uh, thanks for watching.